So this is not at all the video that I thought a year ago I would be making. Um, my initial plan was to kind of chronicle Mia, my cat, uh, her cancer journey in the hopes to help other people whose cats or dogs have uh, gotten the vaccine related sarcoma and I wanted to let them see how resilient she was and you know talk about the treatments and which one worked and the side effects everything like that and unfortunately none of it did work so in the you know we just want to do what's best for her and that would be not to have her in pain, not to have her uncomfortable. We are planning on saying goodnight on uh, Tuesday, which I think is the 5th. So, I mean, I, I still would like to talk about, you know, her journey with everything. And I do have some footage that we can put in, you know, just letting you know how everything went step by step. And, uh... It's really hard. It's really, really hard. I've had her, I think, probably it would have been nine years in November. She's 10 years old and four months, and uh, I adopted her at a time when I really, really, really needed her. And she found me, and she filled a huge hole that was in my heart. And I can never thank her enough for doing that and just all the joy that she's brought our family through these years and we feel like, you know, we're making the right decision. You second guess that a lot when you're the one that's making that call, especially right now because she's on steroids and they make her, you know, really peppy and she's eating and bouncing around. And you're just wondering, really, is this the right choice? Is there some possible way that she's just miraculously better? But she's not. And she is in end stage of her cancer, so. Um, last year in April, we brought her to her family vet. Like, not a specialist or anything. Because we noticed, I think it was a little bit you know, towards the end of January that she had a bump on her right hip and it was palpable, it was squishy and you could kind of move it around a little bit. So we thought maybe it was like a fatty deposit or something like that, but it very quickly grew into this like hard mass that was just on her right hip. It was limiting her mobility. She didn't seem like she was very happy. She wasn't, you know, acting like herself saw the the vet who sent us to a specialist who you know confirmed what we were worried about that it is cancer one of my sisters was a vet tech and she's seen this how many times and she said yeah you you probably really want to get this checked out so it seemed like overnight it went from just this squishy thing to what felt like a shield of bone over her hip and we noticed she wasn't you know able to jump on the bed as easily or anything like that so it was confirmed that it is this cancer and we talked about options they said you could either you know spoil her let her live out her life or you could try to treat it and she's a young cat you know they can live to be in their 30s so we wanted to give her every chance we could which is also a thing I still struggle with, you know, doing the limb amputation. W did she really want that? I don't know. I, I hope that she did because, you know, we did do it. So they amputated. They, of course, took tissue samples. <clears throat> the hope was always that it didn't spread. <coughs> so... They recommended right after the uh, the surgery that we would start chemo right away. They don't recommend radiation, especially on such a tiny little animal. You know, chemo is kind of the way to go with that. So we started out with a IV chemo, 
and I tried to do a lot of updates after each session. We found out that uh, she internalizes her anxiety as I do, so we sort of bonded. Um, she get really worked up, you know, she doesn't like being in her carrier, she doesn't like being somewhere she doesn't know, which I feel like that's, that's everyone, like, you, you really don't like being somewhere strange, a bunch of strange people, strange smells, strange noises, so we tried that, and then that didn't really seem to do a whole lot, so we tried, I think, three different kinds of oral chemo which we could give her at home which was much more ideal because she wouldn't get sick at the vet's office. She wouldn't have that stress of going, you know, every week to get checked out and, you know, they would have to draw blood and then they'd have to place the IV and everything. So we started doing the pill form at home and it seemed to help. I think the, the second kind really seemed to help, but it wasn't quite it. So one more thing that they wanted to try another you know, a different kind of uh, IV chemo. And it's, that's when we realized that we were pretty much out of options. So rather than, you know, keep stressing her out and taking her back and forth, we're, we're just, we're not gonna pursue it any further. Uh, the end of last week, or the beginning of last, I don't remember, I think it was the the very beginning of the week we noticed you know we thought maybe it was a side effect from the chemo that she had that was like a residual thing because she's so little after her her limb amputation she was like seven pounds she's a very small cat so we thought maybe it was just a little bit too much for her and I noticed that she wasn't really eating a whole lot and I check her litter box and she really wasn't doing too much of that other than, you know, she would urinate, but just something seemed really off. And, uh, I, I don't have great vision as all of you know, and she, you know, seemed like she was very tired and just kept going places to lay down and sleep. So I didn't notice that her mouth was open at first. And I don't think that's a normal thing for cats to do is to breathe through their mouth if they're not doing anything strenuous. So I called the vet. Um, Joey met me at work and we took her to the, uh, the specialty office that we were taking her for oncology is actually also an emergency office. They have a bunch of different specialties within. So that's, you know, really convenient for us so they wouldn't have to send out any information to oncology then letting them know like, Hey, they were in, this is what's going on with her. So we took her to the emergency vet and she ended up having a pleural effusion, which is like a lot of fluid around her lungs, which there was so much fluid. It was just pushing on her lungs, on her heart. And, uh, that's why she was panting because she was just trying to get air in. And I, for some reason, like it never occurred to me that this could happen in animals. I know it happens in people, but you just, I, I'm not a vet. I don't know that. So I was, I felt really guilty about that. I had no idea. So they did end up tapping her, removing the fluid. She seemed a lot happier after that. And then that was on this past Tuesday. And we already had the oncology follow-up on Thursday. So... Unfortunately, I could not get the day off work. I'm a healthcare worker right now. There's just no option for it. I was pretty upset about it at first, but I do understand why I couldn't have the time off no matter how much I wanted to be with her. I get it. I get that there's huge, horrible things going on. So we, uh, discussed everything on the phone and she recommended, you know, you don't, you don't want her to be in pain. This is something that's not going to get better. This is progressing. I can't remember how many CCs they removed, but her lungs have already started to fill up again. So, um, Joey and I discussed it and we, we did make that decision that it is time to say goodbye and to let her go and to be at peace and that's, that's just, it's really hard. 
So we do have everything scheduled for this coming Tuesday, the 5th, at 5 p.m. They said, you know, when I scheduled the appointment, if anything gets worse before then, go to the emergency clinic. They know what's going on. Or if you wake up Monday morning and she's gasping, call us right away. We can work with you. We can get you guys in. So that's kind of, um, that's where it's at. I figured, you know, it would be really cathartic to make a video about this. Just get all that info out there. It's not fun talking about it. I get really upset every time I think about it. I'm dreading the moment when we're sitting in the room together. I feel like that's going to be replaying in my mind for a very long time. But she's been so good to me, I need to be as good to her. So, I don't know what else to say. But I figured since she's always been such a prominent part of this channel and my life and everything that I should have some kind of tribute and some kind of resolution. So if you don't see her in videos, this is why I pre-film a lot of stuff. So there's still going to be videos coming that have her that are going to be so hard to edit and see her face, but we're going to be putting them up anyways because, you know. So, yeah, it's going to be tough. We're not okay, but it will get easier. It's never going to be okay, but it'll get better as we go. So, see you later, guys. Oh, good girl. Good girl. All right, so we had our stitches removed and we had our first day of treatment today. I think it was this morning. Oh, and uh, she's doing a lot better than she had been doing. I'm trying to zoom out here. So the oncologist told me she might have been just really stressed from the suture removal and then they did the injection for the chemo right after. Maybe it was just a little bit too much excitement because she really doesn't want to be there. She's very sweet, but what cat wants to go to the vet? And she ended up throwing up, so they... Well, oh, we're jumping down. Good girl. They kept her in there for a little bit, gave her some medicine, and sent me home with some anti-nausea stuff for her.
so we just loved the absolute hell out of that tiny creature and hope that we gave her every opportunity possible to flourish and we were able to be there at the very end with her and you know oh, that was awful <laughs> well that was knowing that ever. she was no longer going to be in pain and she fought as hard as she could just being able to you know hold her and just you know let her go with grace that was a gift for sure knowing that she wasn't you know leaving in pain and uh just like literally the best cat you could ever ask for and companion i didn't even like cats until mia <laughs> to be honest <laughs> i don't even know if i do like cats i think i just really love that cat yeah she was so different she was my first cat and <laughs> me too I, I got her at an extremely difficult time in my life when i just really needed that little ball of love and that's all she gave to me was love like never that spiteful stereotypical cat mm -hmm. mentality that people always assume they have the puke in your shoes yeah no. no never never bit me i would say she never scratched me but she only <laughs> had one leg with claws at the end of there after the amputation she, and she used it when we gave her meds yeah she did not <laughs> like that she was a very spicy lady when you tried to a, give her a pill i still have a permanent scar from her mm -hmm. but i just I really hope that she knew how much that we loved her. And I think she did. Yeah. We did make a awesome shadow ball. I say I say we. You <laughs> made this absolutely awesome shadow box, which I'm gonna show here. That you know, like we have sit next to the box, which which was we were gonna buy another box, but the one that we got from the uh, place that we that we took her, like, gave us this beautiful handcrafted box, like you're seeing in the pit, in the picture, that like we, there's there's no need to get another one, and you know, like you did a great job. That's a wonderful thing to see. Thanks. So many good memories, which is what I will try to think of. It's just it's tough. Mm -hmm. It's tough every day, and you expect to wake up and she'll be on the bed and she's not there and you hear like her jingle sounds different than any other jingle mm -hmm. and you still feel like you hear that and phantom jingles yeah it's just like she was a great cat she was amazing she wasn't even like just a cat she was just like a little person yeah, and i know was. like every crazy cat lady out there is just like yeah yeah like that's how i feel about mine too but like and she was such a, a big part of the channel, too. Mm -hmm. like. She would literally <laughs> watch movies with me and then come back here while I was doing my makeup or setting up or whatever and sit on the chair and be like, yeah, let's talk about this. <laughs> and when ev ev everybody thought that uh, Mia was, was me because they never saw me and her in the videos together, that was hilarious. Yeah. You know, I'd, lo I'd love that until, like, the one live stream where I was sitting there holding her. I was like, see? We were we both are here together. <sighs> yeah, who's in a pet sucks. <laughs> yeah, especially like since like the 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 diagnosis that she had cancer, and they kept you know saying to remain optimistic and it is treatable and everything, but <sighs> it's such an aggressive cancer. There was just caused by freaking. It was, it was vaccine. Because you know. they did the vaccines wrong. No, they didn't do the vaccine well, the, wrong. Well, they did the vac Like, the vaccines were bad. Like Not, they made no. Them wrong. It's just some cats get it, some dogs get it. But unfortunately, it had, you know, it was her and it, it was just so aggressive. And she really, really fought hard. I. I can't believe the amount of strength she had and just never, you know, 
nasty or anything. I was worried after the limb amputation she was not going to trust us and she was going yeah. to, you know, hide and if you cut off my be leg. aggressive, but I... never. Just purring and just the sweetest thing. Yeah, like she really didn't and like the whole the whole time it was we were optimistic, she was optimistic, she was doing great and it was just the last like week and a half she just, you know, had trouble breathing and there was nothing we could do at the end except for let go. It was the most oh, was the worst day ever. <laughs> I've never made a decision like that before. Like I've I've had family pets, but they're your parents well, make that I've decision. Well, I've had like I've had pets that I've I've adored, but they passed away and it wasn't something that I had to take into my own hands uh -huh. and decide like I can't put my feelings first I have to put what is best for her first and that was insanely hard and you know they gave her steroids so she was peppy and she would actually like eat a little bit and she seemed like she was breathing better and the whole day of the hours leading up to it I just kept wondering if I was doing the right thing like maybe she's miraculously recovering but I just couldn't I couldn't do that to her after she was such an awesome so good to companion. us so yeah she was first she came into your life before I did but I was there shortly after so like she's been there the entire duration of our rela relationship from when we first started just hanging out and then we were dating and you know, the whole YouTube channel she's been here, it's just, it's not going to be the same. No. It never is. And so. I know we're not going to find, you know... Another Mia. We're, there's never going to be another Mia, and that... That empty spot is going to be there, but... I'm just glad that we did have the time that we got with her all that time with her. Uh, thankful for the years we had with her. She was the best. Right. Bye, guys. Bye.